fight for Congress. To a pollster, it's about the numbers, who's out there still deciding how to vote, whether to vote. This year, we hear all about the women's vote, how Democrats are trying to keep it. So I went to Celinda Lake, their go-to pollster on the topic. It turns out, to understand what someone may do on election day, first you have to understand what they face in their lives every day. If you're famous for identifying these groups of swing voters, specifically women voters, who's the group this year we should all be watching? It's the sandwich women. The women who are still raising kids and worried about their parents. They have been very hard hit in this economy. Their husbands have often been laid off even if they weren't. Their parents are home because they can't afford their pharmaceutical bills and they have no retirement left. And their kids are back home because they can't get a job. And the sandwich generation is really, really worried about not just the short term, but the long term perspective here. They see their role as holding it all together for their family. And they're wondering, is anyone on my side? Does anybody get this? Have you ever tried to step over your mother-in-law and your son on the way out the door to the job? So the Democrats do have a sort of well-known turnout problem in midterms, right? Including younger, single women who don't turn out as much. Why not? 34 million voters who voted in 2012 not planning to come out in 2014. 24, 23 million of them Democratic voters. Is it really just about the economy and doesn't the economy affect women the same as men or does it not? The personal's always been more political for women. And then this recession's been really interesting because a solid majority of women in this country say at some point they were the major uh, income in their families. So they feel like they held it together at home, they held it together at their place of employment because women were laid off later than men. Mm -hmm. And so it's really changed uh, the economic perspective for women. You know, as a pollster, you always like to think everybody tells the truth all the time, but let's face it, there's certain PC answers that people give. When you test women's issues and you have a man on the phone in a phone poll, do you sometimes feel like you're getting a PC answer that maybe you can dive a little deeper in a focus group where you can really get to what they're thinking? Yes, and we did focus groups of UAW workers, older UAW workers, beefy guys, been on the line their whole lives, and the male moderator asks about equal pay, and dead silence in the group, so I'm thinking, okay, now we're gonna get the truth. And this one guy says, okay, here's the way I see it. If the little lady doesn't get paid as much as I do, then I have to go make more money. And the only way to do that is overtime, and it doesn't exist anymore. So I think the little lady should be paid as much as the man. And I said uh, to my friends, that's not the most feminist articulation I've ever heard of that policy, but the whole group said, yeah, the little lady needs to be paid the same as man. So, uh, but you do get um, the reality, honestly. And what I like about focus groups, in the focus groups, people say, yes, but. And it's that but that's often the most important thing that you're hearing. Is it harder to find candidates who could appeal to these groups because so many candidates are wealthy or come from wealthy families? And is there a disconnect that you see in the polling between the voters and even the women candidates that you've recruited? Totally. What we find is these voters assume all the candidates are wealthy, even the ones who are not. They assume, okay, well, if you had kids, you had some governance, raise your kids, but I, I'm the only one raising my kids that I know about. My husband helps every once in a while. Uh, so absolutely, they feel like people have no idea what it's like to juggle two jobs, three jobs, no idea what it's like, uh, that their life is constantly churning. The economy overall is still seen as not doing well. Yeah. Particularly, it seems, for members of the Democratic base, people who yeah. earn less money, um, some minority groups, etc. How do you explain or talk about those issues if you want them to be excited about voting and yet they haven't seen any tangible rewards out of what they think maybe is the last six years? So it's a really good question and it impacts not only the Democratic base, it also impacts the white working class vote. And the Democrats in uh, 2012 were down to 38% of the white vote. We have to do better than that in an off-year election. And it's kind of like uh, when Clinton was first president and he would run around saying, I've created a million and a half jobs. And he couldn't understand why his numbers didn't go up. And we did focus groups on that. So I said, the president's created 1.6 million jobs. What do you think about that? And she said, yeah, and I've got three of them.